dog vendor right outside Pace, okay? And he has to decide on how much to charge for his hot dogs. Well, let's look at this for a moment. Let's say that he char is currently charging $2, and he's selling 90 hot dogs per day, okay? Um, well, if you multiply $2 per hot dog by the 90 he sells, well, his total revenue is 180. Okay. Is it in his interest to raise the price? Well, yes, it is, in fact, okay? Because at least in a certain range of prices, it's very, it's, it, it's very elastic. That is, um, or I'm sorry, it's very inelastic. People aren't very responsive. If you raise the price from 2 to $3, yes, people cut back, according to law of demand. They cut back by 10 hot dogs, okay? But you've raised the price by 50%, okay? So you've raised the price to $3. So $3 per hot dog times 80 gives you $240. Okay. Now, the range of the, the demand schedule, the demand curve, where an increase in price, when you raise the price, you get greater total revenue, that's called an elastic. People aren't very responsive. They cut back, but not enough to cause your total revenue to fall. This hot dog vendor, if he's profit motivated, would, would not charge a price less than what? Five. Even at five. five. He could do better by, okay, now why would he do that? Well, look at the profit equation I, drew, I, I put up there. Profit is simply the uh, profit, which I, I symbolize as pi, the Greek letter pi, because we use p for price. Pi is equal to total revenue minus total cost, okay? So, notice what's happening. Even at $5, if he raises the price to 6 his total revenue doesn't change. But what happens to his total cost? Well, he has to buy how many fewer hot dogs? Ten, Ten fewer hot dogs, so his total costs are going down. So his profits go up, okay? And at any price below $5, he raises his price, it increases his total revenue, and because he has to sell fewer units, it cuts back on his total cost, okay? So he will, he will sell at a price of $6 or above, okay, in the elastic range. Because above $6, as he increases his price, what happens to his total revenue? It drops. Now, does he want to maximize his total revenue, assuming he has an ongoing business? No, what happens is that depending on its cost, which we're not going to deal with, he will set his price somewhere between six and ten dollars, okay, or possibly even higher, okay. His interest is in the not in, in, in the highest total revenue, but in the greatest gap between his outlays, which is his total cost or total money expenses, more properly, and his total revenue, okay. Uh, now that is a linear demand curve, a, a downward sloping demand curve, um, as we'll see in a moment. In the real world, as I, I pointed out, that doesn't necessarily exist, okay? But let's look at the elasticity and the relationship between a change in price and a change in total revenue. So, to sum up what we said, you are in a, an elastic area of your demand curve when, if you cut your price, your total revenue goes up. That is, people, when you cut your price, they raise their, their um, the, the quantity, okay? They increase their quantity, even though price is falling, they increase the quantity by more in percent terms than prices falling, and therefore they get an increase in total revenue. On the other hand, if you go the, the same way, and that's between 6 and 10, if you, if you go the opposite way and raise the price in that area, you'll find your total revenue falls. If you're in a unit elastic area between six, uh, 5 and $6, notice what happens. Even though you raise your price from 5 to $6, people buy less, but your total revenue is unchanged. Okay? Which means that the percent change in price is exactly equal to the percent change in quantity. They offset one another, so there's no effect on total revenue. Because total revenue is price times the quantity. Finally, in the inelastic range, okay, which is the low prices, on a linear demand curve, the inelastic range of the demand curve is always the, the, the lower half. Um, in that case, if you raise your price, every time you raise your price, you get greater total revenue. Okay? Now, it's economically um, wasteful and counterproductive to ever set your price knowingly in an inelastic portion of your demand curve. Right? You will always tend to set it at a point at which if you raise it further, what has to happen to your total revenue? It has to fall. Okay? If you don't do that, then you are not maximizing your profit. Right? Okay, now, um, let me give you some
rules about the uh, relationship between the slope of the demand curve and its responsiveness or elasticity. Um, the first is this, that all other things equal, the flatter the demand curve is, the more elastic it is. So here's an example of um, a demand curve. Notice that at a price of, of $8, uh, and you can see the line that's uh, the, uh, the um, dotted line, or the broken line that drops right from that point where the demand curve is at $8, down to 10, 10 um, is that in millions? 10,000 units. OK, that's in 10,000 in, in 10, units. So at $8, consumers, buyers will purchase 10,000 units. Now, let's say that's uh, the, the, um, uh, a big uh, store selling DVDs. Okay? And they're deciding, should we cut our price from 8 to 5? Should we run a sale? Or, or let's say it's CDs. Should we run a sale? Um, should we cut the price? Um, well. Uh, if they cut it to five dollars and the demand curve looks like DI, they only increase their um, quantity by two two million. Okay, or, or I'm sorry, two thousand. All right, and their total revenue will fall. However, when the demand curve is flatter, it indicates what there's a much greater increase in the quantity demanded for every unit decrease in price. Okay. So, in which case are they more likely to cut their price? where their demand is more elastic, where people are more responsive to lower prices. Okay? And this is one thing that's, that's very important. People complain about brand name competition. Okay? But if, if there was simply one seller of bread, okay, or, 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 uh, that seller would be able to charge a very high price. The fact that we have a lot of different brands of bread, well, and I'll, let me go back a step. Why would they have a very high price when, when, when you have um, one, one brand of bread? Well, it's not necessarily because it's a monopoly. The demand for bread is, 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 it is partially a monopoly. The demand for bread is very, very inelastic, okay? Um, that is to say, even at higher prices, okay, if it's all the bread we're talking about, all kinds of bread, even at higher prices, people won't cut back much. However, if you have different brands of bread, then what you have is each particular seller, if they raise their price, they'll lose a lot of their customers to some other seller, okay? So it's the uh, fact that we have a lot of competing brands that keeps everybody's demand curve very elastic and, and allows them to cut their, 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 their prices, or it makes it more profitable for them to, to keep their prices low. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll come back to that okay, and, and, and with some examples. Okay. Um, something else I want to mention is the, shape, uh, the shapes of the demand curves in general. What is realistic and what is not realistic? Okay. First look at th this particular demand curve, okay? That is, it's a, a perfectly vertical demand curve. We call it perfectly inelastic because no matter how high you raise the price, will people change the amount they purchase? No, they're going to purchase the exact same amount. People often talk as if the demand for gasoline, uh, the demand for various food items, the demand for um, certain types of, 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 of drugs, okay, that people are addicted to, is perfectly inelastic. That's not true. If it was really perfectly inelastic, what that tells us is that as price went up, goes up, people will never cut back. Even, let's say, somebody, let's take cigarettes. Let's say cigarettes are, are, are $10,000 a pack. People would still, because that, that line goes up to infinity, people would still buy the same amount. It implies then that people would buy an infinite, would spend an infinite amount of income on buying the same amount of a good as the price rose. That does not exist. That's the extreme case. What that shows you is that the uh, um, steeper the demand curve is, okay, the less responsive people are. But in, 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 in real action, people are always responsive. They're always willing to substitute something else for the good that's rising in price. Okay? Now, there may not be good substitutes around, as in the case of gasoline, so the demand might be very elastic. Okay? People cut back a little bit when there's a, a great percentage increase in price, but um, it's very still, inelastic. what's that? Very inelastic. Or, yeah, I'm sorry, thank you. Very inelastic, okay? Uh, take the other um, extreme case in the corner here, bottom corner, where the demand curve is, is completely horizontal. In that particular case, uh, the supposedly uh, 